The other time I was in quarters such as these was in the Verdun Mental Hospital. <laughs> Montreal. I was visiting. <laughs> I was visiting a friend. He was on the top floor. And I asked him, for he was still lucid, where can I get a coffee? He said, downstairs. That was one of those famous last words. I commenced the descent of similar stone corridors, and I found myself in a kind of arena, which was surrounded by closed doors. It had been a hot afternoon, and I had removed my jacket, as I am moved to do. I had left it with my friend, who, though mentally ill, was no thief. I suspect he wasn't even mentally ill. He was doing this instead of college. I stood watching the four or five doors, wondering about all the possibilities, except the one that occurred. Door opened, and two large men in white uniforms walked out. And they said, where are you supposed to be now? I said, in the cafeteria. They nodded to each other. They said, where are you supposed to be now? In the cafeteria. Well, you see, as their questions continued, my answers, which had started innocent enough, began to sound like I, were, I was protesting too much. In fact, after being interrogated more, three or four more times, I was shouting, pushing them aside, causing them to run after me down the corridor. <laughs> it was only when a guard identified me that I was able to go back to my friend, who had eaten my jacket. <laughs> Out of the crowds of Montreal has come a singular talent with four books under his belt and a growing reputation. He is not primarily a stand-up comic, but a novelist, a poet, and a very confident young man. In my journey, I know I am somewhere beyond the traveling pack of poets. I will remain here until I am sure what I am leaving. During the day I laugh, and during the night I sleep. My favorite cooks prepare my meals, my body cleans and repairs itself, and all my work goes well. Cohen gets around. He lives in Greece, and comes to Canada once or twice a year to renew, as he says, his neurotic affiliations. He picks up a prize or pushes a book, or travels to public appearances with other poets like Irving Layton. He was not born into this life. He was born into a well-to-do Jewish family dedicated to the clothing business. Only a grandfather was a writer. I knew him in the last uh, year or so of his life. He lived at our house. I, I had the feeling that uh, he was especially happy that I, ha that I had become a writer. We were both writing at the time. He was uh, becoming senile. But in his senility, there were uh, great lapses of poetry. For instance, uh, he'd encounter me in, in the hallway, not recognize me, and then, and then say, oh, you're the writer. You know, as if he'd found some, uh, some guarantee of, uh, of the extension of his own soul. His blood on my arm is warm as a bird. His heart in my hand is heavy as lead. His eyes through my eyes shine brighter than love. Oh, send out the raven ahead of the dove. His life in my mouth is less than a man. His death on my breast is harder than stone. 
His eyes through my eyes shine brighter than love. Oh, send out the raven ahead of the dove. Oh, send out the raven ahead of the dove. Oh, sing from your chains where you're chained in a cave. Your eyes through my eyes shine brighter than love. Your blood in my ballad collapses the grave. Oh, break from your branches a green branch of love after the raven has died for the dove. Merci. When in Montreal, Cohen holds up in a $3 a night hotel room on the Tenderloin. Well, you always have a feeling in a hotel room that you're on the lamb. And it's one of the safe moments in the escape. It's that breathing spot. The hotel room is the oasis of the, of the downtown. It's a kind of temple of refuge. It's sanctuary. Sanctuary of a 